In this video, we're going to install a local rain gauge in Home Assistant and then use the utility meter integration so that we can track our daily and weekly rainfall so that Home Assistant can let us know when we need to water the backyard garden. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs, my name is Jeff. Lately, I've been on this get local kick with my home automation. Not that I have anything against cloud services. I've just been trying to reduce the failure points in my home automation setup to those that I can control. And one of the areas that's really easy to move from the cloud to local is weather data. A while back, I did a video on integrating Accurite weather devices into Home Assistant. And since then, I've been wanting to add a local rain gauge. So I grabbed a self-emptying one off of Amazon. This one is the Accurite 6034RM. There's an affiliate link in the description. This one is about $40, and in the box, we have an instruction manual, the rain gauge, and some mounting hardware. The bottom of this gauge comes off, revealing the mechanism that tracks the water. Like I said, this is a self-emptying rain gauge, and the joke is there really isn't anything to empty here. The rain flows in, tips the little scale one way or the other, and that's how it tracks the rain. So it never really holds any water to empty. The batteries are also contained under the scale. It just pops out and takes two double A's. Okay, let's talk installation. The whole reason I wanted to add this to Home Assistant is so that it could help me manage the backyard garden. And I really planned on doing this video back in the spring when I was getting the garden ready, but I got distracted by shiny stuff and the garden has gotten pretty established already, as you can see. But better late than never, right? And next year, I need to make the tomato trellis about two to three feet taller. This model is meant to be mounted on something, so I picked a fence post. The only requirement here is that it be in an area where the surface is level and the location is free of overhead obstructions like tree branches. And, of course, it needs to be within 100 feet of your radio because this device has a range of 100 feet. I just mounted this to the top of my fence post using the included hardware. Then I snapped in the battery pack and then snapped on the top. And now it's ready for rain. These Accurite devices work on 433 megahertz, at least here in the US. So you're going to need some kind of radio or device to read the data from them. This model doesn't come with a display or a base station. So it's pretty useless unless you already have one of those. But for this setup, of course, we're going to use Home Assistant for that base station. To set that up in Home Assistant, I'm going to use a Home Assistant add-on that I created using a software-defined radio and some software I found on the internet. So if you're interested in adding some of these 433 MHz devices, check out my previous video on installing Accurite weather devices in Home Assistant. I also created a version of this add-on that allows you to customize the frequency so that you can leverage a wider range of devices, especially for those that don't live in the United States. It's not a perfect solution, and I've done a poor job of keeping up with this integration, but for basic connectivity with these devices, it works pretty well. Since we already have the add-on installed and running, all we have to do is add batteries to this device, and it should start sending signals. Then, after a minute or two, the add-on should see the device and add it as an entity in Home Assistant. The rain gauge itself just tracks the running total of rainfall. So if you want to track the daily rainfall, you're going to need to set up a separate counter that resets on a daily basis. That daily counter is usually handled by the base station or the display that connects to this device. Since we're connecting directly to Home Assistant though, we're going to have to create that solution ourselves. My first iteration of a solution for my daily counter was a little overly complex and it used MQTT. The basic gist was that I would have an automation that would save the current value of the rain gauge to an MQTT topic. Then during the day, I would have a template sensor that would do some math to figure out the difference between the stored value from the previous night and the current total. Which does work, but it is work. And if you wanted yesterday's rainfall total or even to track a weekly rainfall, you were going to need to create a sensor for each one of those following the same pattern. Thankfully, Home Assistant makes that part easier. The built-in utility meter integration is less work and more slacker lifestyle friendly to set up. Unfortunately, at the time of this video, you can't set the utility meter integration up in the UI. So for this project, I jumped into my favorite file editor and opened my weather.yaml file. If you don't have your config split out like mine, then you can simply drop this in your configuration.yaml. 
I plan on getting away from packages in the future to make my config easier to follow, but for now, I've defined my utility meter section in the weather.yaml, and then created two sensors for rainfall. The first is called daily rainfall, and for the source, I just pointed it to my rain gauge and set the cycle to daily. The second is called weekly rainfall. The source is the same, but for this one, the cycle is weekly. Once that was complete, I restarted Home Assistant. The cool thing about the utility meter sensor you get with this integration is that it comes with an attribute called last period, which, as you might have guessed, shows you the value of this sensor for, well, the last period, which, if the cycle is daily and the sensor you're monitoring is a rain gauge, means that the last period is going to contain yesterday's rainfall. Now that we've got this set up, we have to figure out what we're going to do with all of this new data. My first thought was that I could have an entity that displayed the current daily rainfall and then have secondary info on that entity that showed the attribute for last period. Unfortunately, there's not a way using the stock Lovelace widgets to display a custom attribute as secondary info. But there are some custom cards out there that will let you do that. Since I didn't want to mess with all of that just yet, I jumped back into my weather.yaml file and added a template sensor. This one is called Previous Rainfall, and the value template gets the value from the last period attribute from the daily rainfall sensor we created. If you do that as well, you will need to either restart before you can use that new sensor, or go to Configuration, Server Controls, and then choose Template Entities, which will reload it without restarting. If you don't have these advanced options under your server controls, jump into your profile and enable Advanced Mode. Now we can add these sensors to our Lovelace dashboard, which as you can see, I have today's rainfall, yesterday's rainfall, and weekly rainfall now displayed on my weather dashboard. But of course, the whole purpose of starting down this path was so that I could have an automation to remind me when I need to water the garden. So I created an automation called Garden Needs Watering. The trigger for now is just going to be time-based, 6 p.m. every day. Although I suspect I will change this to something that only fires when the garden needs watering. And the condition is going to be template. If the garden has received over half an inch in the last two days, then we don't need to water. So for this condition, I'm simply adding up the daily rainfall and the previous rainfall and checking to see if it's more than a half an inch. Then the action will simply be sending us a message to give us the total rainfall over the last two days so that we can go and water if we need to. And now Home Assistant is tracking our daily rainfall using a Accurite self-emptying rain gauge and will hopefully help remind us when we need to water the garden. That's all the time we have for this video. So until next time, go automate the boring stuff.